Hello, and welcome to episode 163 of Pop Culturally Deprived, where each week we watch a movie I've never seen before, which is most of them, and talk about the good, the bad, and the Ralph. This week we're going to be talking about So I Married an Axe Murderer on your Whoa Man podcast. Mandy Kay, and you can find me on Twitter at Mandy Kay. And I'm Matthew Vose. I'm on Twitter as at Matthew Vose. Did you wave to everyone when you said hello? Possibly. We them <laughs> so much. We are back after our mini hiatus and Patreon releases. Mandy's very excited to see you. I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, from Picard's chalet living room. She it's waved a study. hello. I guess it's a living room. I call it a study. I didn't mean to wave, but apparently I miss everybody so much that I did. Uh, you guys can you. see me through the audio waves. <laughs> we're back. We're refreshed. And we've got more content for you. We're going to talk about uh, Mike Fire's vehicle. The big ones is what we're going to hit in this new season. This new period of... What are we called? Pop culture to cry? I almost said How I Met Your Mother. I do not know. <laughs> Our podcast is not called How I Met Your Mother. (laughs) I would watch that over... No, we'll come to the movie in a minute. Um, I had no idea this was a Mike Myers movie. Yeah. I'm baffled by that. (laughs) Is it just one that ended up on the list for a very long time? So you were like, right, that one. That's a random film. Yes. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Yes. Because I was like, that one's... uh, I think that one's supposed to be like a fun comedy movie, kind of. That's why I picked it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And looking at the um, the movie poster or the cover of the video, like I never looked at it closely enough to recognize the dude. It looked like some generic rom com brown haired dude. No, he's not a floppy haired douchebag. He looks it. That is that is the floppiest of all floppy hairs. That's someone who had fl- uh, floppy hair and yeah. has also been called other things. Um, it is the ninetieth hair that ever ninetyed. Yeah, some of us had center partings and curtains as well, so. <laughs> Going for Kurt Cobain, ending up more like straight Mike Myers. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Not that Mike Myers isn't straight. I mean, like, you know, yeah, square. I know. Yeah, okay, I know good. what you mean. What, what, this film, So I Married an Axe Murderer, can you tell us the plot of So I Married an Axe Murderer? Well, he didn't marry an axe murderer. Spoiler alert. Mm. The title lies to us. It does. It absolutely does. Um, So IMDb says, a San Francisco poet who fears commitment suspects his girlfriend may have a knack for killing off her significant others. Which is basically true. That is the, yeah. Where did you get that from? IMDb. I said that. You weren't listening. Okay. Okay. Don't you listen to me when I talk, Matthew? Never. Never, Never, ever. I'm just thinking of the next thing I can say. (laughs) I'm a man on the internet. What else do you think I'm doing? Right? Exactly. <laughs> do we then even need to get into why you never watch this if you don't know who's in it or what it's about? I mean, I I don't actually remember when this movie came out. I don't remember ever hearing about it when it came out. Mm. And then later, when I would have heard about it, I probably saw that it was Mike Myers and then didn't want to watch it. And then just yeah. kind of forgot it was Mike Myers. Okay. If any of that makes sense. I feel like it was out when I was in the U.S. Were you in the U.S. in 1993? Maybe. Maybe. I'm trying to have a look at what else came out. That Yeah, so Jurassic Park came out that year. I definitely saw Jurassic Park in the U.S. I think. Was was that the year Clueless came out as well? Clueless was 96. It wasn't the year that Clueless came out. That was the next time I came back to the U.S. Because I remember being voted down that we couldn't see Clueless at the cinema. Mm. Other people in the car probably have a different memory of it, and we probably went to see, like, Independence Day or Last Action Hero, or, you know, something fun for everyone. Um, but yes, this, I think this came out around the same time as Jurassic Park. I remember seeing Jurassic Park in the theaters. Mm. I just don't remember this one. Maybe Jurassic Park just overtook everything that year. Maybe. Oh, no, Last Action Hero came out the week after Jurassic Park. So I definitely saw those two in the same time I was there. 
Interesting. End of July. I wonder if it was being trailed. Trailed? Trailered? Advertised? <laughs> I don't know All the of word the you're above. looking for. All of the above. <laughs> All right, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about this movie other than it came out in 1993? Yes, let's move on. So I Married an Axe Murderer is a 1993 romantic black comedy directed by Thomas Schlamme, written by Robbie Fox and starring Mike Myers and Nancy Travis. I'm sorry, Mike did Myers. you just say Tommy Schlamme? Thomas Schlamme. Okay. But yes, it's Tommy Schlamme. If you're Lonnie Diane Rich, it is definitely Tommy Schlamme. <laughs> Uh, Mike Myers was cast early in development and worked on the script with Neil Malarkey. However, Robbie Fox rejected a request to share the screenplay credits and the Writers Guild of Arbitration gave him the sole credit for the film. There were reports of personality conflicts with the director Thomas Schlamme and Mike Myers, particularly including comments about Myers being controlling. Comments since have stated that he wanted to play outside his usual roles and style, including dramatic elements alongside his comedic performance. Sharon Stone was originally cast as Harriet and also wanted to play her sister Rose. This was rejected and Stone refused to take the part. The film was a disappointment at the box office. It earned $11.5 million against a $20 million budget. Critics were unenthusiastic about it, with Roger Ebert calling it a mediocre movie with a good one trapped inside. However, Janet Maslin in the New York Times notes that the film surrounds Mr. Myers with amusing cameos and gives him the chance to do more than just coast. So, do you actually think that that this gave him the opportunity to play outside his usual roles and style? Well, so like I, I will admit, I wrote this before watching the film back. Okay. Uh, and thinking, you know, maybe I'm a bit unfair on the film. Maybe actually, if I watch it, there's something interesting going on. So I put the comment in there from Janet Maslin to make sure I was being unbiased about it. And now I put that, and I feel like I'm just like, hey, look at Janet Maslin. She sort of, kind of didn't see that he was coasting and doing his comedic shtick right because that's all uh, it was was his yeah all of it even when he was just playing Stuart as a person it was a caricature just like wayne mm. i i think there were times we should probably get into this in a minute but i think there were times that he's doing like i'm i'm acting and i'm i, I you know your your mileage may vary on mike myers acting but then suddenly he does something. It's like, oh, it's Wayne. Mm -hmm. He just slips back into that character. This is, you know, an intellectual version of Wayne in, in some ways. Yes. Th there were moments where I was watching him thinking, this is terrible acting because he's doing his comedy shtick. Yeah. And then he would slip into actual acting. Mm -hmm. But the character he was portraying just went along so well with that shtick that I didn't see it as having any actual dramatic elements. No. Even though he's not a bad actor, he's just really good at this one thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is fair. Uh, and I think surrounds him with amusing cameos. I don't think he got to be involved in the cameos. I think it was Anthony Labaglia who got all the cameos. Hmm. Alan Arkin and Kramer and... Alan Arkin, and... that's who that dude was. Um... And I also think the thing with Sharon Stone is really interesting. I think Sharon Stone in, in the part of Harriet would have been too on the nose. Mm-hmm. A, a little bit. Um, have you seen Basic Instinct? I have not. Okay. Mm, interesting. Um, I think it would have been too on the nose. And I think it would have been difficult because there are a lot of scenes where you'd have to differentiate the sisters and they'd have to do something like they did with Mike Myers in his dual role in this. Mm-hmm. Um, but then with the twist at the end, I'm like, actually, no, this would have been great if it was Sharon Stone in both roles or, or the same actress in both, whoever it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's disappointing they didn't do that because also the comments about Mike Myers and, you know, I can't even remember if I put this down as a comment, but there was a thing about when they did the first table read, they hadn't cast the father. So he was like, oh, I'll just do it. And apparently the producers really liked his take on it and decided to give him the part. He doesn't have a take on it. He's loud, obnoxious, Scottish version of Mike Myers. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Some of the same gags. It's like, it's the same stuff he will do for years on end now. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. yeah. And, and maybe it's just because we've seen it elsewhere that it doesn't seem interesting, but it's, yeah. So how were you able to watch this movie in the UK? I had to rent it on Amazon because it's not available anywhere. It feels like one of those films that should be available everywhere. But yes. Same here. How 
yeah, how were you available to rent it and to watch it in the US? I also rented it on Amazon. Yeah. I mean, it's available to rent everywhere. It's on Google yeah. Play and iTunes and YouTube, but you still have to pay for it. It's not on a Netflix or something, which it feels like it should be. It should be. Absolutely. Mm. Um, did you rent the HD version or the SD version? Probably the HD, because that's what everything defaults to. Okay. I saved a pound. I rented the SD one. This was not going <laughs> to benefit from <laughs> Okay, um, is this our first Mike Myers? No, because we've done Wayne's World 1 and 2. <laughs> oh, crumbs. Okay, so welcome back, Mike Myers. Uh, where have you seen Mike Myers before? Hey, um, Wayne's World 1 and 2. Nancy Travis, yeah. Um, and oh, also crumbs. Austin Powers, as we would previously talked about. Although I've only seen 1 and 2 Austin Powers. I never saw the third one. Okay, diminishing returns yes. on that series. Hey, you've seen Shrek. I Um... I saw Shrek 1. Okay, diminishing returns on that series. Okay. Mike Myers has been bad for his own career, frankly. Hmm. Poor sequels, bad choices like The Guru, um, and and just a number of films that he's the war or waste. Him and Eddie Murphy rotting in a dungeon somewhere. <laughs> a dungeon of their own celluloid career. I don't know. Some metaphor. All right. <laughs> Nancy Travis. I mm. love Nancy Travis, but I only know her from her role with uh, Tim Allen on Last Man Standing. I, I've never seen that, and I think I might enjoy it. Is it good? I love it. Okay. I do. It's so bizarre that I love it. I think it's because they do it a relatively balanced perspective, mm. because Tim Allen plays this ultra-conservative, like, Obama-hating okay. white dude. But his family is not that. And so you kind of get both perspectives. And and so it balances each other out, I think. And I just think he's mm. hilarious. Okay. Um, And Nancy Travis is his wife on that, which is where I know her from. And I I just think it's hysterical. Right. Okay. Nice. She she is also in two films directed by uh, you know, favorite of the podcast, Leonard Nimoy. She's in Three Men and a Baby and Three Men and a Little Lady. Oh, I have seen those. She is the mother of said baby and little lady who were the same person. Hmm. I did not remember that, but I also haven't seen those movies since they came out. So Okay. And, and if you want the proper Star Trek connection, she replaced Terry Farrell when Terry Farrell left Star Trek Deep Space Nine and starred with Ted Danson on Becca. And when she left Becca, Nancy Travis replaced her. Okay, so it's like a two degrees, yeah, of Star Trek. She, it, I, I think there was a, you know, uh, it, it was a point of her reuniting with Ted Danson, um, in a role that had been, or not a role, it, you know, the person who left the, the show was Terry Farrell, and the new character introduced was Nancy Travis, as I understand, not having watched that many seasons of it. Okay. Hmm. See, now I can tell you that Terry Farrell leaves Deep Space Nine. Because I know that already. Because <laughs> you now know that Jazzy and Axe was not in all of it. <sighs> so, still hurts my Spoilers mind. for Deep Space Nine if... I might cut that. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, perhaps I beep it out. No, I mentioned Terry Farrell way too often. Too. Yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> I mean, you, you specifically said she left the show, so... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, um, the thing that this reminds me of when we talk about similar things that we might have seen and what we can compare it to is the kind of classic screwball romantic comedies. Okay. Hijinks ensuing as this couple get together, misunderstandings, almost like a um, a little bit like, is it You've Got Mail? Stuff like that, maybe. So is there anything like that that you've seen that you can think you can compare it to? I wouldn't have put You've Got Mail in the same category as a screwball romantic comedy, so I wasn't thinking along those terms. Okay. Um, especially since I googled list of screwball romantic comedies <laughs> and all of the movies came from like the 30s and 40s. Um, <laughs> so given the origin originations, original screwball comedies, um, Some Like It Hot totally counts, right? Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Um, So that's the one that came to mind, even though it does not appear on almost any list of screwball comedies out there. All of them are like His His Girl Friday and um, other movies I had never even heard of. Lots of movies that have Thin Man in the title. Um, So I'm assuming that's some kind of franchise from back then. Um, But Some Like It Hot is the one that comes to mind. When I think of movies like this, I, I, I'm sure there are others. That I'm just blinking on what okay. they might be. I think that's that's not a bad catch. Mm-hmm. Sort of slightly zany antics happen, and eventually the couple get together. Right. I know that's not necessarily what happens in all the, all the films, but mm-hmm. that's largely the plot. I think the reason that you've got male occurs to me is I was thinking of a play called She Loves Me, which. You've got mail is sort of based on that same source material. Which okay. has some of that. You know, yeah. They're writing to each other. They don't know who the other is. They're arguing, but they're actually in love with each other. Mm-hmm. Are they going to get together or not? I don't know. I mean, I guess we could also much ado about nothing. Yeah. Is, is it? Yeah. <laughs> specifically, <laughs> you know, Tate and Tenet mm. version, because that one's very screwball. Um, I think that fits, too. Yeah. But I I like the comparison some like it hot because this is a sort of big plot thing. It's not just the will they won't they. It's like and maybe she's a killer and right. maybe they like her but they're having to pretend to be women. <laughs> you know. Right. Right. So I married an axe murderer. Did you like it? You know I did. Oh okay. I didn't love it, but I liked it. I thought it was oh. interesting. Um, it kept my attention. I think it could have done something better, but mm. overall, I I enjoyed it. Oh, okay. Well, you are so I'm shocked. Sorry. I I did not. Watch you back, I was like, oh, 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 this is Mike Myers doing the Mike Myers shtick. But Nancy Travis was delightful, delightful, well, exactly. and Anthony yeah. Le, Lepaglia, Lepaglia, how do you say his name? He go was with, delightful. <laughs> you know, Alan Arkin was amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot to really like about this movie when you start digging into the details. Yeah, that's why for me it's a five out of ten because I could lose all the stuff with Mike Myers, which is most of the film. Right. Everything else is really good, and Nancy Travis. So I was a little worried. He, you know understanding that it had been cast as Sharon Stone. I think Nancy Travis might not even have been the second on the list. I think there might even have been someone else cast who then couldn't make it. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. Um, uh, No, Nancy Travis was then cast in the role instead. Uh, It made me worried that it was a bit like we saw with Paul Williams in the funeral. I was going to be like, oh, she's out of her depth. You know, she's not got the strength to stand up to him or something. No, she absolutely held her own with him. Mm-hmm. I, I think I think the stuff where it's Nancy Travis doing comedy and she does some really good comedy in this mm-hmm. is actually better than Mike Myers' comedy. Yeah, I think, I think, I think it's surprising. I think this movie would have benefited from somebody who wasn't so loud in like the comedy shtick world, mm-hmm. right? If somebody who could be more subtle with their comedy mm-hmm. would have elevated this movie to something great yeah because the story is good the execution of it except for mike myers was good Mm. um but i think some of it was so over the top that having mike myers be over the top like made it too much yeah yeah that's fair so i'm trying to think who i would rather have seen in that role and you mean like a steve martin Steve Martin could have done it, absolutely, because he can do both very well. Mm. He's not just a one-trick pony, and Mike Myers is very much a one-trick pony. Yeah, as much as we weren't taken by the jerk, like, Steve Martin was that character. Mm -hmm. You didn't see bits of Steve Martin coming out of it. Right. It was just, the character wasn't great. Yeah, yeah, and and you don't see any of the jerk character when you watch him in Parenthood. Absolutely. Right, like, he can differentiate and not just do the same thing over and over again. Mm. I mean, Mike Myers does what Mike Myers does, and he does it really well, but that is not the appropriate comedic vehicle for every comedy. No. So. Uh, so let's have a look. He would have been 
late 20s when this was made. Yeah, so this came right after Wayne's World mm. 1. I, I, I think you're absolutely right that if I could have ignored the My Maya stuff, it would have been fine, but it's just that's so much of the film. And then and then you suddenly get the introduction of his father. And there's almost no point to the role of the father in this, except for the anniversary party. Mm. That's just, oh, this isn't funny. <laughs> I googled. You did, did you look up actors born in the 60s? Yes, I did. I mean, there's always Keanu Reeves. He would have been lovely in this. Think, you know, point break speed, Keanu. Uh-huh. Doing doing some of this. Do, trying to be a, you know, beat poet. I, I don't know that you're going to support me on this, but Paul Giamatti could have done it. <sighs> the problem I'm having with Paul Giamatti is he gets really good when you get into the 2000s, when he hits his 40s. Hmm. I don't know what Paul Giamatti in his 20s was like. That's fair. We could have done uh, Colin Firth. <laughs> yeah, Can you imagine? This would have come out the same year as Pride and Prejudice. Pride, Pride and Prejudice. Wow, yeah, okay. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Or even Patrick Dempsey's on my mind because I watched Outbreak today, which also came out in 1995. Okay. Well, that was 95, not 93. Um, but he was in it. And I think he probably could have pulled it off because I've seen him do such varied characters over his career. Okay. Having, having just watched the first half of Enchanted. Well, I mean, he's that's doing Derek. Nothing with that role. Yeah. That's Derek <laughs> Shepard in a Disney movie. <laughs> yeah. basically. <laughs> um, and, you know, to be fair, he's up against Amy Adams in the role she was born to play. So. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Let's not talk about Mike Myers annoying me for. Well, we don't have to talk about Mike Myers anymore. There are other things we can talk about here. Although I probably would have liked, I would have liked to have kept Mike Myers as the father, just because he cracked me up. Okay, yeah. If that was the father, because you, no. To be fair, you can see the line from the father to the son, the the personality similarities, the sort Mm -hmm. of uh, aggressive, energetic comedy. Um. So, you know, I, I liked it in Twilight that you could see the, the genetic link between mm-hmm. them, the characteristic link between them. So maybe, uh, there were lots of cameos in this film. Let's talk about the cameos. I honestly what? didn't pick up on most of them. Oh, really? <laughs> and, and is this just because they're all kind of SNL people from before you really would have watched it and been aware of who they were? And... Probably. Um, mm-hmm. Phil Hartman? I didn't Mm -hmm. know that it was Phil Hartman until I looked it up. Like I knew he was somebody the way, the way they shot that character. I was like, this is somebody important. Like I get it, but I don't know who it is. And then it turned out to be Phil Hartman. I Um, see. As soon as he came on, I'm like, I'm Troy McClure. (laughs) Yeah, no, not a clue. Have you not watched the Simpsons? Not very much. I wasn't allowed to watch it as a kid. There's 28 seasons of The Simpsons and we start no. that next week. No. <laughs> There's a million episodes. Um, Alan Arkin, I don't actually consider a cameo. He had a substantial role. That's fair. That's fair. Um, we can definitely talk about him. But I forgot his name was Alan Arkin. I was like, I know that dude. Where do I know that dude from? And then I didn't look him up. Right. Um, so the only cameos I actually picked up on were Kramer and Mr. Traeger. Okay. What's Mr. Traeger? from then because friends i know he was the building super in friends oh he was wasn't he okay because i i he's in wayne's world even wayne's world too as well mm. so. okay. Mm, okay yeah i didn't pick um, up on any others <laughs> who did i miss um the there was one of the police women who was from snl uh charles groden as the commandeered driver uh charles groden's a famous actor he looked familiar, and I pulled up the spotlight thing on Amazon to see who he was, and I didn't recognize his name. Okay. Um, Midnight Run, I think, was his probably biggest movie. But he's he's been in lots of stuff. Oh, Small Part in Rosemary's Baby. Mm, Great Muffin Cave. I mean, I know you've not seen anything, so. Have you ever seen Dave? Dave. Dave. Uh, don't know. Probably not. Mm. Maybe. I don't know. 
came out in 1993. Ladies and gentlemen, Dave, Kevin Klein vehicle. Should we should we go and watch Dave? Because I remember really liking it. I'm going down the list. You see, and we're now in the point of the like people I don't recognize. Debbie Mazza, who's always as light seeing everything, as the girlfriend who was electrocuted. Oh yes, Debbie Mazar. Yes, I love her. Mazza. <laughs> she um, has been in a lot of things that I like. Mm. Uh, and then you know, like you say, you've got people with slightly bigger roles. People like Amanda Plummer locking up mm-hmm. as the um, sister, Alan Arkin as the captain, and others. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Did it? I'm assuming then it didn't stand out that there were lots of random people with speaking lines. No. Okay. It didn't. So maybe they just decided to go for cameos where they could and get people in. I mean, I guess the the Alcatraz tour did seem weird. Mm. Like I didn't get it. Like why was it even in the story? But if it was just to give Phil Hartman a a vehicle to have lines, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it feels a little bit like, yes, you're allowed to film in San Francisco if you use some of our landmarks. Because people who live and come from a town do not go to the landmarks of the town. Oh right, God, right. Let's go on a Saturday tour. It kind of felt like this was something they do often, didn't it? Like, <laughs> yeah. They, yeah, so. And then it was the weirdest story. Oh, my mm. God. It was so weird. Very strange. Um, but Michael Richards, is, uh, you know, coming on as an insensitive man was just Kramer. It wasn't even. Mm-hmm. It almost was the same hair too, not quite, because he had gel in it. Okay. The way he moved, the way he spoke, absolutely, yeah. it was Kramer and bursting out of the room at the end. Mm-hmm. Fun event that was very weird. Um, let's talk a bit, Anthony Lapaglia. Then delightful, oh, yeah. delightful, delightful. I went and watched Serpico after this. Oh, did you? I did. I'd I did only not. I've never seen it referenced. I've never actually really seen it. And it's so much better having seen Serpico because, like, Serpico is a great story anyway. And it's a, a biopic, or not biopic, it's a story of a real person who went through all this stuff. Um, but there were so many little touches they did about some of the, like, the, the thing calling him Paisan. Mm-hmm. That is in Serpico. Um, the hat he wears at the end is in that commandeering cars, all that kind of thing. It's a really nice thing. Okay. All yeah. right. I think th- that's probably one of those things that has diff- different levels, right? Because I've never seen Serpico, mm. but I, right. I've i seen enough like cop procedurals mm-hmm. to kind of understand what he was going for yeah. and like why he was disappointed in essentially paperwork, mm-hmm. right? Um, so it it worked for me without having seen Serpico. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's, the one that I think really was good is the point of you look like an under- undercover cop who's trying to be hip. <laughs> and that's one of the the things in Serpico is he tries to dress, he has a moustache and then he has a beard and he dresses as a you know, beatnik, you know, guy mm-hmm. in the late 60s hanging out in New York streets. Um, and, and he convinces his superiors to let him do that because they need to show that they are part of the community and then, you know, they don't stand out and act differently or look differently and all this kind of thing. So, okay. like, it is really exactly what this guy is trying to do, but just not quite hitting it. Mm-hmm. And especially for San Francisco, because San Francisco is a little, you know, a, a bit different from New York, so some of the same stuff wouldn't work. Right, right, yeah. 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 I think it's interesting, though, because I think I've only ever seen Anthony LaPaglia in one other thing. Like, his okay. face is so familiar to me. Mm. And then all of a sudden it occurred to me, that's Joe from Empire Records. And then okay, I was like, I don't know him from anything else. Uh, let's have a quick look at the list. Oh, let's see his name. Yeah, well, Empire Records is his most famous thing, according to this. Which you have seen, correct? Yes, a okay. very long time ago. Okay. Uh, let's see if there's any TV stage, TV. I mean, I assume he's been in Greys and Star Trek somewhere because everyone else. <laughs> I don't uh, think he's ever oh, been no. in Greys. He's not been in Greys. Wow. Eight episodes of Frasier, though. Good on him. I haven't seen all of Frasier, so. No, I don't think anyone has. There's too much. There's more Frasier than there is The Simpsons, I'm sure. <laughs> um, if this film had been 
he thinks she's the axe murderer or he gets pulled in on the you know he's trying to convince his buddy to be with her and then he gets pulled in the case and we were following him with snippets of mike myers Mm -hmm. this would have been a great film maybe i I think they gave his character so much personality and background with all Mm -hmm. the serpico stuff um but yet he doesn't get enough to do he doesn't get to evolve that need and that desire until it gets fulfilled at the end. Mm-hmm. I would have liked to see more of maybe him trying to do some of these things and it not quite coming off. You know, him trying to find the bad cops and bring justice to a city that actually, you know, is quite nice, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, instead we get lots of Mike Myers stuff. I would have preferred, you know, would we have liked the Mike Myers stuff if it was every so often? We see him right. do that poem once. Not once three once. times? Right. (laughs) Yeah. Mm. So I'm not sure how I would rewrite this to make it better because I, so I knew immediately they were going to set her up to be Mrs. X. Okay. Like, I mean, that was just heavy handed, right? It's it's in the title. So yeah. (laughs) Well, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But I mean, they set up him being paranoid and then we see that and it, and then he meets her and so just it was very very heavy handed and so it was mm-hmm. either f- from my perspective it was either going to be he's paranoid and he ruins it and it's not her or they're setting it up that it's really going to actually be her he's right but he's going to love her enough to live with it okay that's kind of nice. where i thought it was going oh nice i did not clock the sister oh mandy so I think that might be part Slipping. of why I liked it, right? Because I okay. didn't catch it. Mm. And usually I would catch these things. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think it's because I thought the twist was going to be that he's right, but the twist is on him and that he's going to end up being okay with it. That's what I was okay. looking for. I, I didn't go for the more obvious. It's actually the I mean, sister. Is, is it because you didn't think the film was that clever? <laughs> is it you thought the film was going to go for a dumb obvious? Maybe. Maybe. I I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think that's part of why I enjoyed it, though, because I was genuinely surprised and didn't find it predictable. Yeah. Um, Yeah, no, uh, that that ending is quite good when it does turn out to be, because they once they get married, they really lean into, it's her. Right. The way she acts implies it's her. I I don't think I can quite buy that I have a headache stuff. I think... I think it can all be explained away, though, when you realize that she starts to become genuinely worried about him because her sister's already killed her other husbands. True, true. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, and that she didn't want to get married because they always leave her on the wedding night. So, mm. Yeah. Mm. So, I don't know. Oh, do you think... I mean, she knew, right, that her sister had killed them, didn't she? Oh, okay. That's how I read it. That she I, knew. I thought that the so the note that was left about I can't be with you was what always happened. She gets a note from them saying they can't deal with the commitment and they leave her. Oh. Uh, yeah. I don't know. She just didn't seem that surprised that her sister showed up. Leading Harriet to believe that each husband simply left her. Hmm. Okay. I miss yeah. I misread that yeah. in the movie then. No, yeah, so I don't think she knew it was her sister. She just knew they disappeared after marrying her Mm. because she's unlovable and they can't be with her. Oh, that's actually more depressing. Quite a bit of damage, yeah. Yeah, I don't like that version. (laughs) Mm. I, I, well, I, the bit I do like in their, in their romance, and, and it is quite a good romance. It's not as, um, sketchy as in Wayne's World with him and Tia Guerrero. Mm hmm. It, it, it feels a lot more genuine. And like I say, part of that is she holds her own with him and he doesn't just constantly tell her how good looking she is. Right. She has um, quite the same sense of humor as he does, mm-hmm. you know, which was very evident when they were having lunch with Tony and Debbie Mazar. Mm-hmm. And they all had these like huge scenarios of what would be worse. And she's just like, where well, you get electrocuted. Yeah. And they're like, and, and have some imagination. As in, yeah. As soon as he helps her out in the butcher's shop, they're, they're sort of mucking around in the same way. I mean, he's way over the top and exhausting. But 
they're doing some of the same stuff and she, you can see she's kind of into it. So mm-hmm. that's cute. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then when he proposes to her with all of his paranoia uh, and, and fear of commitment, it, there is a genuine thing. He is moved by what his father says and what his father says about his mother is very nice. It mm-hmm. was like a good little speech. I, yes. I like that. Um yes. And then she's not sure, and they talk about it, and eventually they agree to it. And that is nice as well. I struggle with that bit. Okay. Because they didn't actually talk about it. He basically just begged. And then she gave in. Okay. And in 1993, that was, like, a romantic grand gesture. And now I look at it, and I'm like, is it? Is it really? Or is he just not taking no for an answer? You see, I thought it was after because his father, they go and dance. He proposes they have back and forth about it and, and his father then says I want to propose a toast to him for arranging this shindig um, and something like you know I hope he gets to find the happiness that I've always had mm-hmm. and I think that sort of sways her with like okay this is a nice guy perhaps I should try okay maybe maybe mm-hmm. I, I know, think but... sometimes I'm just too cynical <laughs> and and sometimes I can't just see something for what it is yeah, maybe maybe I'm just not remembering the film because I don't want to remember this film too much. Okay, that's uh, fair. Well, then let's move ahead. Did did you have any favorite moments? I mean, you kind of gushed about Nancy Travis. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, my that's two it. Okay. Are Nancy <laughs> Travis and Anthony. In fact, I I think that's what I would change about it. I would make the story much more revolved around the friend, mm-hmm. and and it wouldn't be a, a Mike Myers vehicle at that point. So that's. A shame for him and his career. Go on. What if we switched the actors? What if Stuart, no, Charlie was played by Anthony LaPaglia and Mike Myers played the cop? I, I don't know because you don't know what they'd bring to it. Um, I would quite, no, to be fair, I would quite enjoy Mike Myers trying to do an Al Pacino, a sort of <laughs> quasi, because part of the thing with Serpico is he is into good music and nice food and reading and mm-hmm. but he's also an NYPD cop in the 60s in a very dirty time right and beat people and all this um so bringing some of that sort of you know intellectual erudite air he tries to bring in this mm-hmm. to an Al Pacino impression in a policeman could have been quite fun and then we would have just gotten snippets right because the friend isn't really in it that much. He doesn't have a lot to do. So that might have been yeah. just enough Mike Myers. We would have had to have lose, lost some of Alan Arkin. Because Alan Arkin's performance is big. Yes. You know, that's a memorable character. And it's an exceptionally good character. Mm-hmm. Um, but it probably wouldn't have worked paired with Mike Myers. Yeah. Yeah, possibly so. Yeah. So I'm not sure. That's, that's, I think, what I would change. Because I do love what they do with the friend. And... I, I, to be honest, if you're saying about switching them, I couldn't work out at the beginning, like, are they brothers? When mm. they're hanging out at his house? That was a bit weird. Um, Just friends. And then, like, like Catherine, and I don't think Catherine was actually watching it with me, but she was like, I thought Mike Myers was a policeman. Was like, oh no, he's just hanging out with the policeman. He's a poet. He's a poet, he's a poet. Mm. yeah. Like, I couldn't actually figure out what he did for money. Like, part of me wondered, did he own the the bar the Maybe. the poet mm-hmm. spot because they called him our own charlie what's his face oh i thought that was because he was from san francisco yeah i i, I wasn't sure because then we never see him at a job ever no, and he has the time to just go help her in her shop be a poet day. and yeah just yeah. drive a nice car and stuff exactly mm. yeah I don't know. um and yeah nancy travis how good was nancy travis She's good. Yeah. There's, there's stuff that she does through, throughout this. And nothing is coming to mind for whatever reason. Like, But there are just a number of bits where she is actually do, holding the comedy and doing the jokes. Mm-hmm. And I think it re- it holds up really well. And, and partially because I've not been exposed to it so much. Whereas Wayne's World, I know both those movies very, very well. Right, right. So I've seen the Mike Myers stuff. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's why other people didn't want to go and watch this. Cause... Yeah, that's fair. Here. How about you? What stood out for you? I mean, it's stuff that we've really already talked about. All okay. the stuff with, with Tony and his boss. I don't know the character's name. Was it Tony? Or were we just calling him that because it's Anthony, the actor? Mm. 
Tony Giardino. Oh, it was Tony. Okay, great. Yeah. So all of that stuff was fantastic. Um, I what found a it. Well done film. Yeah, I, I found it amazing that Alan Arkin like went through the trouble of trying to learn how to be meaner. Yeah, it was fantastic. So it was fantastic. Um, I love <laughs> the whole like I'm gonna you know rinse you out with the spaghetti. Was that too much? Is that a racial slur? At this point? <laughs> Yeah. Like, yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah, it was great. It was absolutely delightful. Um, I love that I didn't catch the twist. Um, I thought it was hilarious, and I don't know how you feel about this, but because the family was very overtly, like, overly Scottish, that they had a dartboard with the picture of the queen on the back of the door in the bathroom. The queen mum. That was the queen's mother. The queen's mum. Okay. Mm. Um, I, the, I still found the, it hilarious. The wife of our previous king. Mm. Mm. I found <laughs> that one quite interesting. I, I, and and you've now made me wonder. Did they think that was the queen? Because it was strange to be the queen mother. Like there were so many mixed reports of of what she was like and what she was like when she was um, married to the king mm-hmm. when the king was alive. But as queen mother, she was fairly beloved as this sort of genial older lady who would come out and sip her sherry and gin and... Mm. Yeah, I assumed it was the queen. Mm. Silly Americans who don't know anything. It might have been a bit much having the queen on there. You're absolutely right. They were Scottish. Did Mm. you know they were Scottish? He was out buying them haggis. Did you know they're Scottish? He had a Scottish wall of fame. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And Oh, and then when they check into the place, they check into the Abbey Burns room. Was a famous Scottish poet. Mm, yes, yes. As in Burns Knight. Um, <laughs> yeah. Did you know they're Scottish, by the way? No, never knew they were Scottish. <laughs> yeah, they worked quite hard at that one. Yeah. And the the mum is actually played by an Irish actress. Really? But her Scottish accent was much better than my Miser's is. Yes. Mm. Yep. Which he would come to do again and again and again. Apparently, he's just fascinated by the Scottish accent. Mm, clearly. All right. I think it's because he can say heed in that way. That might be it. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, he clearly had fun doing this movie, I think. Yeah. He seemed like, on the screen at least, it looked like they had fun. But yeah. maybe that's called acting. And I did want to call out um, the thing about the reports of him being controlling and controlling and him and Tommy Schlamme not getting on. and. Uh-huh. It being a difficult thing, and put that back into comments about him and the director of Wayne's World, mm-hmm. uh, was it Penelope something? Yes. Um, and that he didn't want her back on the sequel and so on. Right. Sounds like he may be difficult to work mm-hmm. with. Absolutely, Pen- Penelope Spheris. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just it, it adds up into an image of a person. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I I don't know if there's anything more. Of, of my minds I would ever want to watch. Um, but if I do, I might I might look into reading more about that. I think maybe we're done with Mike Myers. Yeah. So so have you seen Austin Powers? You have. You I've seen, seen one and two. Yeah. Okay. And when they came out, I loved them. Yeah, there's part of me that's interested to revisit them. Certainly that first one. The first one is a really good take off of the James Bond tropes. Mm-hmm. The chauvinism, the drinking, the British attitude and mm-hmm. so on and so forth. In such a way I, the, the problem with doing something ironically is you still have to do the thing to do it ironically. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to differentiate and I think those films do very well at differentiating this is taking a mick. Right. right. I, I think the second two don't do that. I think the second two do the, we're trying to make an actual film now, not a com- comedy spoofing something else yeah it starts to take itself too seriously but mm. seth green shows up in two so he shows up in one. Oh, he, is he in one mm. i thought he was just in two mm. and three scott evil scott evil i don't remember his name scott evil he's in all three. Oh, mm. okay then maybe only the first one's worth watching yeah there we go all right all the quotable lines are from the first one that's true Get in my belly. No, that's the second one. Really? 
Yeah, yeah. Fat Bastard's in the second one, not the first one? The Scottish dude? It might only be the third one as well. Oh, no, no I, I've not. Is, is, is in the second one, yes. But not the first one? Not the first one, I don't think so. I don't know. The most quotable line to me from Austin Powers is in the second one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's not listing him as in the, in the second one. Oh, in wow. The first one, sorry. Wow. Sorry. Seriously, that is the most iconic line to, for me from Austin yeah. Powers. I always like the allow myself to introduce myself i'm richie cunningham yeah i don't remember that line <laughs> it's just it's such a like throwaway thing but, like i think to anyone if you introduce yourself as richie cunningham they're like wait isn't that the dude from happy days it's weird <laughs> all right is there yes, anything else yes. that we need to discuss about so i married an axe murderer um enchanted let's talk enchanted <laughs> i love enchanted it's my favorite disney movie Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh. I mean, it's not Tangled. Let's just be straight on that. It's but. my favorite live-action Disney movie. Okay, that's fair. How about that? Um, yeah. Yeah, no, it was interesting to watch. I basically, I put it on, and it was on the cartoon bit, and I think I've only seen the cartoon bit in the cinema. So, I was like, oh, that's actually worse. this. So, when did you watch but, it? In the week. I only watched oh, the first Oh, you just half, watched I, it for the first time this week? No, 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 no. I watched it when it came out. Oh, okay. And I think I, I have seen it since, but I can't remember the cartoon bit. So I was like, oh, I'm going to watch the cartoon. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Amy Adams is very well animated. Susan Sarandon is very well animated. James Marsden looks bland as anything. I could not he's tell if it was James Marsden animated I think he's supposed to, though. That's kind of the point of his character. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, <laughs> yay Enchanted. Yay Enchanted. Let's talk films we like. Yeah. Don't know how we got to talk about Enchanted and so I married an axe murderer, but there you go. <laughs> All right. Well, if you would like to join our conversation, you can use the hashtag PC Deprived on Twitter. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Eloquent Gushing, or you can send an email to podcast at eloquentgushing.com. We are completely funded by listeners like you through Patreon. Anything you give gives access to exclusive content, bonus shows, early access to shows, exclusive merch, exciting things that we will send to you, and you know that you are supporting our wonderful network and our amazing shows. So if you want to find out more, you can go to patreon.com slash gushing and read all the cool stuff and back us and help support us. And we will be back next week with another episode. Until then, I'm Mandy Kay. And how can you hate the colonel? Pop Culturally Deprived is an Eloquent Gushing production. For more information, go to eloquentgushing.com or find us on Twitter at eloquentgushing.